Good morning. It's Thursday, June 27th. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Burglary bust at the former Dowling College campus. It happened in Shirley. Christopher Alea of Ronkonkoma, Crystal Dowdy of Bohemia, and Michelle Brill of Selden are all facing a judge today. They were arrested yesterday after police say Alea and Dowdy walked out of a building. Brill was waiting in the car. Police say they found burglar tools inside the building. The stage is set and we're just hours away from a historic debate. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump will face off tonight in Atlanta. It's the first debate of the season and a rematch four years in the making. Newsday's White House correspondent Laura Figueroa Hernandez tells us what to look out for. Both campaigns are expecting a large audience to tune into this debate, even though it's happening in the summer. It's happening in a very consequential election. Polls show that Biden and Trump are neck and neck. Um, it's essentially, they're in a statistical dead heat. Um, so expect a lot of, of Long Island undecided voters to tune in to hear from the candidates about immigration, about abortion access, about um, the economy. Uh, those are kind of the bread and butter issues that people on Long Island, people, voters across the country are really concerned about. And obviously there's going to be some other outside factors. There's going to be uh, questions about the age of both candidates and their ability to perform for another four years. Um, there's also going to be questions. There about are also some changes to the usual both, format tonight. Uh, their mics will be kind of controlled. So when one person is responding to a question, the other person's mic will be muted. And um, that's done so that there will be, you know, more opportunity for viewers to hear an actual response versus the back and forth and then the throwing of the jabs. Also, there won't be a live studio audience. Um, so that will, you know, kind of cut down on some of the, the cheering and the booing from both sides. And just, again, give the both candidates the opportunity to respond in a clearer way for viewers to hear. Read more about the debate on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Population changes on the island. New U.S. Census data shows the island's Asian population grew near 4.5% between July 2022 and July 2023. The Hispanic population grew by more than a percent. And during the same period, the non-Hispanic white population decreased by over 1.5%. Defending Suffolk's cyber attack response, former Chief Deputy County Executive Lisa Black testified before a legislative committee about the crippling 2022 attack yesterday. She said the attack affected only 2% of county systems. However, Black refused to answer when pressed on whether she deleted related data from her work computer. Only in Newsday, debate over PSEG's $15 million incentive. Two LIPA trustees challenged PSEG yesterday. It came after the company missed critical performance metrics last year, but still earned a multi-million dollar bonus from the state. PSEG scored highest for how reliable the grid was, but missed important milestones in customer service. One trustee is now questioning the notion of paying incentive compensation at all. A new crackdown on littering in Babylon with a twist. The town has installed 14 new signs that ask, why are you littering? And include sassy responses like, I am lazy and mommy still cleans up after me. It's all a part of Operation Clean. The next step includes installing cameras. From Freeport to Phoenix, Long Island's Ryan Dunn is headed to the NBA. The 6'6 forward slash guard out of Virginia was selected 28th overall last night in the NBA draft at the Barclays Center. The Denver Nuggets originally owned the pick, but get this, they traded it to the Suns. If you're struggling to find a good deal on a home, I get it. Home prices skyrocketed in six Long Island communities. Macy Eglin takes a look in a story you'll see only in Newsday. You would think as rates get, get higher, as you know, affording housing gets more expensive, that you would see demand come down, and we just haven't seen that on Long Island. Newsday's Jonathan LaMontia has been looking into the numbers. In the last six months of 2023, home prices increased in 83% of Long Island communities with at least 25 sales compared to the year before. That's according to appraisal firm Miller Samuel. One of the places we saw the biggest increase in these median home sale prices compared to the year before was right here in Bayville, 29% over last year. Jonathan, what's been driving that for this small village? 
So one of the interesting things that real estate agents said about, you know, one thing that might be contributing is, you know, the rise of remote work after the pandemic. And, you know, if people are working more days remotely, they might value, you know, some of the community feel the ability to walk to the beach or walk to a coffee shop. Plus, Bayville is a generational community where families grow and stay, meaning there's less inventory and higher demand. In fact, that's driving up prices across the island. Data shows the number of properties for sale fell to the lowest we've seen in 40 years in December, in part due to the pandemic. Mortgage rates have gone from a few years ago around 3% up to about 7%. They were approaching 8% at the end of last year, and you still have, you know, really strong demand. According to one key MLS, both counties saw record-setting median prices for single-family home sales in May, 790,000 in Nassau and 651,000 in Suffolk. People are waiving mortgage contingencies. They're waiving home inspections. Um, they're offering uh, rent back options to the sellers. Other communities that saw a spike in home prices include Albertson, East Mauritius, Woodbury, Copeg, and Babylon. And experts say until inventory goes up, those prices likely won't come down. Reporting for Newsday TV, I'm Macy Eglint. Read more about Long Island home prices on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. A professional wrestler from Plainview is ready to thrill his hometown crowd. Alfonso Castillo gets in the ring with Maxwell Jacob Friedman in a story you'll see only in Newsday. When you're talking about big time pro wrestling on Long Island, there's a few letters you need to know. UBS, as in the UBS arena. AEW, as in All Elite Wrestling, which is coming to the UBS arena on June 30th. And That's enough. You're talking way too much. It's about me. The only three letters that matter are MJF. That's short for Maxwell Jacob Friedman, the Plainview native who will take on mass luchador Echicero at AEW Forbidden Door in Elmont on Sunday. Regardless of where he's slotted on the card, when MJF is on Long Island, he's the main event. No matter what shade of gray MJF is or what color people want to paint me in, good guy, bad guy, I'm just the guy. And the fact of the matter is every time I show up in LI, they've only ever responded one way. And that is with a symphony, a chorus of loud, intense cheering. Even when he was wrestling's most hated bad guy, Long Island fans have always had a reason to cheer for MJF. This time around, MJF says his return to Long Island will be extra special. He's returning from a six month injury hiatus and just signed a new contract with AEW, ending years of speculation that he might sign with rival promotion WWE. Listen, I'm a businessman at the end of the day, but at the same time, I'm a businessman with a heart of gold. And the fact of the matter is I've been inside of AEW since before day one. I didn't get hired at AEW because I was somebody's good friend. I had to work for every single thing I've gotten, and that work started here on the island. MJF recently returned to where his journey started, the Create a Pro Wrestling School in Hicksville, the school's most famous graduate now teaching the ropes to the next generation of wrestling stars. All right, right now we are going to teach this gentleman from Newsday Can't be that hard. how to take a, excuse me? Can't be that, hard. that was a mistake. <laughs> how to take a body slam, and by how to take a body slam, I mean I'm going to body slam him, and he doesn't really have much of a say in the matter. Are you ready? Uh, it's ready to look. Fantastic. Make sure to get your tickets for Forbidden Door today. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, AW Forbidden Door is coming to UBS Arena on June 30th. Uh, for Newsday TV, I'm Alfonso Castillo. <laughs> oh, Alfonso, I feel you. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully, he's okay. See more exclusive stories like this on Newsday.com. I can't get over the foot. Uh, just click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. What's Up on Long Island is brought to you by EastEndGetaway.com. End up here.
Here's what's up on Long Island. Oh, the shark bike has such deep beer. Cicel Valentinetti, the crooner from Long Island, sings a Rat Pack classic Sunday at the Paramount in Huntington. Willie Nelson and family. On the road again. Bob Dylan. Check out the Outlaw Music Festival. It stars Willie Nelson, Bob Dylan, Robert Plant, Allison Krauss, and Talise. It's Saturday at the Northwell Health at Jones Beach Theater in Wontaw. Ride the historic Nunley Carousel. It features 41 horses. You can take a ride Friday, Saturday, or Sunday afternoon in Uniondale. Should be a good time. For admission info and more events, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box on our homepage. Checking out your hyperlocal Thursday forecast. Overnight storms are clearing, but the roads are still wet in some places, so please take it easy. Here's a look outside at West Scott Cameron Beach in Bridgehampton. Clouds and some showers this morning, turning into a nice and sunny afternoon. We just have to get through the morning. Here's your day planner. Sun and clouds this afternoon. Highs in the 80s across the island. Another beach day for you. Tomorrow, sunny and dry temperatures in the upper 70s. And here's a look at your seven day forecast forecast with a look at your weekend weather. Long Island weather is brought to you by Fire Island Ferries. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great morning.